Canon 70-200 f4 ISL is a very popular lens between Canon users. Let's see if it justifies its price tag. Build quality is perfect. Lens is weather sealed and doesn't have external moving elements. That means both zoom and focus are completely internal. Even the back element is fixed, so basically there is no way for dust or moisture to enter this lens. Zoom ring is very smooth and glides perfectly. It can be operated with just one finger. Focus ring has a bit more resistance, but is equally linear in a way how it feels. Controls are easy to reach and can be found without looking at them. At the top there is focus limiter, below are autofocus switch, image stabilization and finally stabilizer mode selector. Mode 1 stabilizes both horizontal and vertical axis, while mode 2 is used when panning as only one axis will be stabilized. IS works rather good. When careful I was able to get almost perfectly sharp image at 200mm and 1 8 of a second. 67mm filters can be attached at the front. Lens hood is part of the retail package as is the case with soft transport bag. Sadly tripod mount leg isn't so you have to buy it separately. Original is way too expensive for what it is, but there are plenty of third party options on eBay, just like the one I have. Together with the lens hood, both protective caps and optional tripod leg, this lens weighs around 800 grams. On both my 6D and 80D this lens usually has perfectly accurate focus. It takes under a second to cycle through entire focus range. Full frame first. At 70mm center looks perfect straight from f4. Let's see corners. Yeah, also perfect. 135mm, same story, both center and the corners, as is the case with 200mm. This is exceptionally sharp lens on full frame. How about high resolution crop sensor? Center is lovely, but corners don't look so good. It is not bad, but there is no outstanding level of details I saw in the center of the frame. At 135mm center is excellent, corners look better than 70mm. 200mm center is flawless and corners seem to be sharp once again. Interesting, it appears this lens is sharpest at 200mm. Altogether impressive performance. There are no problems at 70 and 135mm setting. At 200mm different story. Focus shift is quite visible between f5.6 and 11. But things are not that simple. These examples were shot at the round closest focus distance at 1.2 meters. When I tested focus shift at twice the distance at around 2.5 meters, effect is significantly weaker. The longer the distance, the less of a problem it is. So finally at around infinity there is no focus shift at all. These are the same crops you saw earlier when I showed you resolution. Basically avoid using this lens at 200mm between f5.6 and f11 if your subject is under 2 or 3 meters away, otherwise nothing to worry about. Focus breathing is visible. I've seen worse, but I've seen better also. This lens is not designed to be parfocal, but holds up rather well in this regard. Focus plane does move a bit, but for non-critical applications it will be usable. A bit of lateral chromatic aberrations can be observed in corners, mostly at 70mm, but this is very low and very easy to remove in post. Nothing to worry about. Longitudinal aberrations are visible at 70mm wide open. They are not strong though, clean up nicely at f5.6 and disappear almost completely by f8. At 135mm things are much better, 
I can see them only wide open at f4. By 200mm there are none to be observed. In real life I don't think I ever notice them on any of my images. On full frame, slight barrel distortion can be observed at 70mm. It changes to pincushion at 100mm and beyond. In real life this will be visible only if you have some straight lines in your images. Otherwise it is not a problem. On crop sensor distortions are almost invisible and I wouldn't worry about them at all. 70-200mm lens is perfectly corrected for coma. It is actually impressive how much can be observed just with 200mm lens on a modern high resolution crop camera. That little dot in the left corner is actually Jupiter. With a bit longer exposure and 100% crop, three of the larger Jupiter's moons are easy to see. On full frame, some vignetting can be observed at f4 on all focal lengths. It is not strong though and cleans up nicely at 5.6. By f8 it is basically invisible. On crop sensor it is really hard to notice any vignetting. Maybe a bit on 200mm f4, but otherwise perfect performance. Flare resistance is not ideal. With a strong light source inside the frame, various ghosts can be observed. In real life this could be a problem if you shoot sunsets or indoor sports. If a bright light ends up in the frame behind the players, you're not gonna like the results. Bokeh is lovely with this lens. Autofocus highlights are rendered in a uniform way. On a full frame this is not a particularly good choice if you shoot close-ups often. On crop sensor it might be interesting if there wasn't focus shift at 200mm which occurs only at close focusing distance. Still, I managed to get some very nice close-up shots with it, especially if left at f4 when focus shift is not an issue. Starburst is beautiful with this lens. For conclusion, 70-200 f4 IS is pretty much perfect, except a bit of a flare problem for sunset photos and focus shift at close focusing on 200mm, there are no other flaws with this lens. It is a bit pricey but you get what you pay for. Thumbs up! That's all for this review, if you want to support my channel check the links in description and thanks for watching.